In this age of modern technology, it is difficult to go through any part of any day without coming in contact with a product that is derived from petroleum. From gasoline, heating oil, cosmetics, and synthetic fabrics, to plastics, asphalt, and even candy, we can't go 24 hours without using scores of petroleum-based products. Oil and gas, and its byproducts, have significantly improved the quality of life for people all around the world. We all benefit from increased reserves of oil and natural gas, not to mention the fact that augmenting our domestic reserves reduces our dependence on foreign imports. With this much consumption of oil and natural gas, how can we continue to locate new supplies of these resources that are buried deep within the Earth? Beginning some 75 years ago, a technology known as seismic surveying has been instrumental in the exploration for hydrocarbons. Seismic data is collected by sending sound waves into the Earth from source points on the surface. These sound waves reflect off the layers of rock and are recorded back on the surface by microphone-like instruments called geophones. The recorded data is then processed to create an image of those rock layers, the same process used for the medical imaging procedure of ultrasound. Using seismic data, geologists and geophysicists can much more accurately locate deposits of oil and natural gas that lie beneath the Earth's surface. Without the valuable information provided with seismic data, a greater number of wells are typically drilled within a production area. Completing a seismic survey allows geoscientists to more accurately determine the best locations to drill, reducing the number of wells drilled, which in turn reduces the area impacted by surface disturbance. With today's acquisition equipment and techniques, seismic data can be collected with near zero impact to the environment. There are several advantages to using seismic exploration. Where oil and gas exploration and development are allowed, 3D seismic surveys have proven to drastically reduce the environmental impact of oil and gas operations. They do so by providing images of the Earth's interior that minimize the total exploration and production wells drilled. Local communities incur immediate and long-term benefits from the seismic process as well. The information gained through seismic data collection allows operators to drill fewer wells, minimizing the disruption and inconvenience to the community. In addition, revenue generated by a successful well helps fund community roads, schools, and other municipal needs. Geophysical operations such as seismic surveys, by their very nature, have almost no impact on the environment. This is because these surveys are temporary undertakings conducted by trained personnel utilizing carefully designed equipment and techniques. Seismic crews use existing roads and trails whenever possible. When necessary, they completely avoid archaeological and biologically sensitive sites. In the case of 3D seismic surveys, the vast majority of the area to be imaged requires no access at all. For areas that are physically traversed, most of the activity is only for placement of passive geophones and connecting cable deployment. A far smaller portion of the surface will be accessed to generate the sound waves used to create seismic images and then accessed by existing roads where feasible. For an average seismic program, only about 5% of the surface area experiences any traffic at all. There are seven interrelated processes in completing a seismic survey, each dependent on the completion of the previous operations. All phases of a seismic survey adhere to strict local, state, and federal regulations that serve to protect communities and the environment. These processes include planning and permitting, surveying, equipment deployment, sound wave generation, data recording, data processing, and cleanup of area traversed. Seismic operations must comply with various federal, state, and local ordinances and regulations. Prior to any seismic operation, service and or mineral permits must be obtained for areas where survey equipment will be operated or stored. Many operators hire third-party companies to make certain that each project complies with these laws and permit requirements. This permit agent is involved in each operation and is the primary contact between landowners, government officials, and the seismic company, even after the project has been completed. 
The permit agent often assists in negotiating with landowners for temporary surface access as required for data collection. A crew of specially trained workers using Global Positioning System or GPS instruments carries out the survey process. Their job is to accurately place small flags that mark the energy source points and geophone locations within the survey areas. This quiet, non-invasive process of placing the survey points must be completed prior to the deployment of any seismic equipment. When necessary, the survey crew works in conjunction with experts, such as biologists or archaeologists, so that sensitive areas can be completely avoided by the seismic crew and its equipment. Immediately following the recording phase, the survey area is carefully traversed by a cleanup crew to remove all flagging or other survey material placed in the field. After the surveyors have finished marking geophone and source locations with pin flags, stakes, or flagging, other members of the crew can begin to deploy equipment. The geophones are typically distributed in small groups along the receiver lines. These phones stay coupled with the ground by means of a spike attached to their bases. Additional wires and cables are set out in order to connect the geophones to digital sampling equipment and electronic recording hardware. To create an image of the structure within the Earth, seismic vibrations are generated at the source points to produce sound waves that reflect off the different layers of rock. These sound waves are then recorded by the geophones. There are two energy sources commonly used to generate sound waves, vibro-size equipment and shot hole method. Vibro-size equipment are hydraulic shakers that can be mounted on trucks or high-clearance buggies. They have large mechanical vibration pads that are used to transmit sound waves into the earth. Depending upon the location, federal, state, and local governments may limit the sound wave levels produced. Licensed for road operation, the trucks are often accompanied by security officers to protect equipment and control traffic. Typically, a group of four or five vibro-sized trucks are used on a job site following the path laid out by the survey crew. The trucks may travel side by side or single file, according to the wishes of the landowner. After the trucks are in place, drivers lower mechanical pads onto the ground surface. Then, the truck's hydraulic system vibrates the pad at specific frequencies. All of the trucks vibrate simultaneously, usually completing the work at each source location in a matter of minutes. When the pads are raised, the trucks are driven off to repeat the process at the next site. The vibro-size method is so mild that the sound waves can be generated very close to buildings and pipelines without causing damage. In more isolated areas, small diameter shot holes are drilled to a depth deemed appropriate by trained geophysicists. A small explosive charge is then lowered and anchored at the bottom of each shot hole. Next, workers plug the shot holes according to federal and state requirements. Anchoring and plugging the holes makes it virtually impossible for anyone to remove the buried explosive charges. The charges are then detonated, generating the sound waves that will image the subsurface. As the sound waves travel through the earth, they reflect off the layers of rock and are recorded back on the surface by an instrument called a geophone. The geophones, connected by wire cables, send the data back to a trailer that houses the recording equipment. At the data trailer, or doghouse, this reflection data is written in digital form onto magnetic tapes. Raw data tapes are sent from the field to a computer processing center. In the processing center, the data is sorted, filtered, and mathematically assembled to create the most accurate image of the Earth possible. Depending on the size of the area tested, data processing can take an average of about six to eight weeks. The result of this processing is a three-dimensional picture of the Earth beneath the testing area. Enormous volumes of information must be gathered, processed, and interpreted before a decision can be made to drill a well. Accurate images of the Earth's subsurface enable companies to drill a higher percentage of successful wells, adding new oil and gas reserves to our nation's energy supply. Immediately following the recording phase, the survey area is carefully traversed by a cleanup crew to remove all flagging, recording equipment, or any other materials so that the area is left as near to its original condition as possible. Any possible damage or the need for mitigation measures is promptly reported to crew management for immediate attention. 
The permit agent or other representative of the crew will coordinate the repair or mitigation effort to make sure all the terms of the permit have been satisfied. Seismic operators are legally responsible for any damages they might cause. This responsibility is assured by state and federal bonding requirements, surface owner agreements, and liability insurance. There will be times when seismic operations need to be conducted in sensitive environments or near the habitats of threatened or endangered species. There are a number of steps that can be taken to minimize environmental impacts from these operations. The steps vary depending on the nature of the environment to be protected. For example, fibrosize vehicles used to create sound waves use wide tires to minimize plant and root damage. However, such tires may not be appropriate for arid brush country, where minimizing vegetation impact may be a primary concern. State-of-the-art seismic surveys can be very flexible. The approach to a survey may be tailored to meet specific conditions or stipulations for a given area. The survey's project timing, source locations, and equipment type can be modified if needed. Equipment options may include, for example, shot hole drills that are mounted on light, medium, or heavyweight vehicles, or they can be transported by helicopter or man portable. Similarly, vibro size trucks come in a variety of sizes and tread configurations. Close cooperation between the seismic survey company and the managing governmental agency will produce the best outcome for the geophysical data as well as for the environment. When submitting an application for permits to conduct geophysical survey operations on U.S. public lands, geophysical companies meet with land management agencies such as the BLM and U.S. Forest Service to plan the surveys. Responsible for managing public resources these agencies require geophysical operations to be conducted in a way that minimizes the project's impact on the land and the environment. During this planning and permitting process, environmental and historic sensitivities are identified. From there, the most appropriate methods for minimizing impact are determined so that an operational plan can be developed. Often, key areas are avoided altogether. Only then is final approval given for the project to proceed. Working from older 2D seismic data in southwestern Colorado, an oil and gas exploration company drilled 13 wells in the area. Four of the wells were productive, successful wells, and nine were dry holes. Based on the older existing seismic data and the success of the wells drilled, there appeared to be opportunity for more successful wells. However, rather than risk the cost of additional dry holes, independent producers decided to spend the money on a 3D seismic survey to provide a much clearer image of the rock formations and potential reservoirs. The 3D seismic program was acquired. The results, however, were disappointing because the images from the 3D survey showed that the area was not nearly as prospective as hoped and that only one more well should be drilled. Without the 3D survey, as many as 13 additional wells might have been drilled in this area. The possible drilling of 13 wells that would have been dry holes was thereby avoided. This real-life example has been repeated throughout the world thousands of times. 3D seismic surveys offer a dramatic reduction in the overall environmental footprint from resource development. Fewer wells drilled means fewer drill sites, fewer roads, fewer surface equipment facilities, fewer gathering lines, less vehicular traffic, and so on. Whenever oil and gas exploration and production is allowed on public lands, the use of 3D seismic surveys should be encouraged. When seismic mapping is conducted within urban areas, the geophysical operators take special care during all phases of a seismic operation to minimize impact on residents and their property. Explosives are clearly an inappropriate energy source for densely developed areas. For this reason, vibrosized trucks are typically the preferred energy source for populated areas. This minimizes the risk of damage to roadways, buildings, and other infrastructure. This demonstration shows just how safe the use of vibrosized trucks is and how unlikely it is to cause damage to homes or other structures. For the demonstration, several raw eggs and light bulbs are buried about six inches into the ground. A vibrosized truck is centered over the buried eggs and light bulbs, 
and the vibration plate is lowered under the ground and activated. The vibration frequency range and duration for the demonstration is identical to that used during actual vibrosize operations. The results? The eggs and light bulbs unaffected by vibrations generated only inches away are dug up intact. This table shows vibration levels called peak particle velocities created by various energy sources and the vibration levels that can cause damage to various structures. The blue bars show vibration levels caused by various common energy sources and sources related to seismic testing. The limit at which most people even notice vibrations is shown in yellow. It is similar to the level that will activate recording devices during seismic testing. Finally, the red bars indicate the seismic levels that are needed to cause damage to common building materials. Clearly, all of the energy sources used for seismic mapping are well below the level that causes building damage. Most cause less vibration than slamming a door, and many of the seismic sources are almost undetectable by the human ear. Local communities incur many long-ranging benefits from the seismic process. The information gained through seismic data collection allows an exploration company to drill fewer wells, which minimizes the disruption and inconvenience to the community. If the seismic data yields strong prospects for oil and gas drilling, the local economy and certain landowners will receive significant economic benefits from the leasing of lands, exploratory drilling activities, and if drilling operations are successful, royalties from the production of new oil and gas resources. In addition, a percentage of the revenue generated by a successful well helps fund community roads, schools, and other municipal needs. Local labor may be hired to assist in the operation, as well as the revenue generated by housing requirements and meals for crew members. Local businesses will also benefit from purchases of supplies to support operations, and local taxes and permit fees paid by the seismic companies.